Hi, welcome back to C programming. Now we are going to see the unary, binary, and ternary operators. So coming to these operators, the unary operator is and binary and ternary, three types of operators are there. And we'll see one by one, the unary operator. This operator, unary, it's one. So to operate, uh, this one operand is needed. So one with one operand, this operates. So here we are going to see the first one is unary minus. Suppose I want to uh, give a negative value to one variable, right? So minus a, we can say. So that is one operator. Another one, increment, that is indicated by plus plus. Suppose I want to increment by one, the value of n by one, this is a plus plus n is one, right? So R n is equal to n plus one, increment or decrement operator, similar to that, it uh, decreases the value by one. Here, this increment and decrement operators come in two ways, pre-increment and post-increment like pre-post. So similarly, decrement also, it comes in a pre-decrement and post-decrement, we'll see them clearly in next. And uh, another one is a not, right? We'll see them clearly, address operator, ampersand, right? And the size of operator. All these need only one operand. With only one operand, all this act. So here we are going to, uh, before proceeding further, like, share, and comment all these uh, lectures on uh, C programming. If you like them, please subscribe so that you will be getting the alerts whenever you have an update. Okay. Uh, unary operator is uh, first, uh, let us see unary minus. So here, unary minus is, uh, I have taken. Let us see with a simple program. Integer a is uh, declared and uh, uh, its value is given 10. And b is equal to minus a. We are integer, b also is an integer. And the value of a is uh, converted to minus and that is assigned to b. So let us see what the value of b. If you see that the b value will be minus, minus 10. So that, that's the unary minus. Next, pre-increment. Here, we have taken two variables, a and b. a is given value 10, and both are integers. And the increment, this increment is called plus plus. Plus plus is a, an increment. So b is equal to plus plus a. This plus plus signs have come prior to the variable a. That's why we call it as a pre, pre-increment. The meaning of it is before we operate anything on this, the value, actually we are assigning the value of A to B here. And before assigning, the value of A is going to change because it is, these two signs are prior in the sense in front of the variable. So prior to this assignment, Prior to this assignment, the value of A changes. Okay, let us. Suppose I have taken, a, the I want to see the value of A and B, how they change, how they will be. Here I have used a, a tab so that I get in the same line, the values of both. Instead of a next line, I have taken tab so that you can remember and use them in the same line, but with a gap. So here, compile and execute, the value of A will be 11 and B also is 11. Why? Because here the value of A changes because before assigning itself, the value of A changes here and 10 become 11. After becoming 11, this is assigned to B. That's why the value of B is also 11. Okay. Now let us see the post increment. The post in the sense, the symbols, these two plus plus signs, how come after the variable A? The difference here is the value of A is assigned to B first here. Afterwards, the value of A changes. Here, this plus plus uh, operators operate on A only. Nothing to do with B. So 
after assigning the value of o, a, that is initially 10. So 10 is assigned to b, and then the value of a changes. So after this statement, whatever you use, it the value of a will be changing. Let us see how it will be. So compile and uh, execute. Here, the value of a is assigned first to b. That's why b value is not changing. b is 10. Now, b is 10. But afterwards, after this statement, the value of a has changed. That's why whatever the next statement, uh, the value of a is used, it takes a value 11. So you have to be careful whether you are using this plus plus sign increment either in front of it or afterwards. That makes a lot of difference. So here, the value of a and b. Next comes pre-decrement. Here again, the decrement, two minus signs are taken and it is pre, pre in the sense in front of the variable. So the, these two signs are taken in front of the variable. So what happens? When you are operating the a itself, the value of a has changed prior, prior to the usage of that variable, that value of a has changed. So what happens? The value of a, 10 becomes a nine. And that 9 is assigned to B. So here the value of A already changed, so it is 9. So if you just uh, compile and execute it, you get uh, both the A and B as 9 only. Clear? So here, suppose I want to take this as post decrement, like this. Post decrement. I have taken afterwards, these two signs afterwards. What happens? Initially, the value of A is 10. That same 10 is assigned to B. So B is equal to 10 only. But after this assignment, the value of A has changed because afterwards we have this decrement operator. So after this statement, whatever the number of statements you are using here, the value of A changes to 9 and that 9 continues till further changes happens to it. So like this, the increment operators or decrement operators, whether they are post or pre, should be taken care of very carefully, right? Next, not. Before we see this uh, not operator, let us say, uh, let us take a simple program. If I have taken a integer a and uh, assigned some value from the system, and uh, I'm comparing this a with the zero. If A is less than zero, that means a negative, what happens? It should say it is a negative. Okay, next. Otherwise, what happens? Print, either it must be either zero or positive. So it must be either zero or positive if this fails, if this statement is false. So here, let us compile and execute this. And uh, I have entered a value negative minus 20. So what happens? This is uh, true. That means this statement should be executed. So it is a negative, it should say, right? Suppose I have given a positive value. This statement, this condition is false. So this statement should execute. So it is either zero or positive, clear? Now, so after seeing, this is a very simple logic. After saying, let us see this uh, not operator now. What is this? A less than zero, same as earlier, but we put a not here, not operator. What happens? The meaning of it is, this A is not less than zero, not A, earlier it is A less than zero, here A not less than zero. If it is a not less than zero, what happens? It should be positive. Right? It should be either zero or positive. Otherwise, it is a negative. So here is the logic. The logic changes. So when you are using this not operator, you must be careful. Right. Now let us see. We have given a some positive value. That means a not less than zero. That means positive. So it should say it should execute this statement and we should get this. Got it. It is zero or positive. Okay. Now, 
Suppose I have given some negative value minus five. What happens? A not less than zero, not less than zero, right? It is negative. It should say that it is negative. So like this, the unary operator op operates, right? Next operator is the size of. Size of operator here, uh, to see that we have taken uh, four variables declared as integers, and each one is uh, assigned with uh, the size of an integer, a size of a float, size of double, and the size of character. I want to find out how much memory an integer occupies, that the value is assigned to A. All these A, B, C, D are taken positive integers because these are all the memory is in integer values only. So all these are all integer values. So size of integer is A, size of float like this. Let us print these A, B, C, D values and let us see how much they are. So size of an integer is uh, four bytes. Size of a float is four bytes, a double eight bytes and character only one byte. So like this, the size of the operator, size of a uh, operator can be used, right? So here coming to the binary operators, next uh, two operands are re required. Two operands in the sense, when you are performing any arithmetic operators, operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication or division like this, you need two A and B, A plus B, A minus B like that. Or logic relational operators. Relational operators, when you are comparing two numbers, A and B, which one is less or bigger or equal, not equal, something like this. So we need these two operate, operands. So relational operands, operators comes under binary operator category. Next, logical operators. We perform uh, logical operations like uh, and or not. So here also we need two operands. And bitwise operators, another wise, bitwise and bitwise or or bitwise exclusive or. These are all operators. Let us see. Them. And uh, coming to this bitwise operators, another one is uh, left shift operator, right shift operator, and uh, bitwise complement. These are all the operators here. Relational operators return either true or false, right? Relational operators, uh, they return either true or false, and it tests two or more conditions, depending on the given statement it tests. So here, already we have clearly discussed these uh, arithmetic operators, relational and logical. Now we'll discuss this uh, bitwise operator in detail, right? Coming to this binary, it's a binary operator, right? So uh, coming to the arithmetic operators, we have this uh, A plus B, A minus B like this, they are used, relational operators, right? Less than A, less than B like this. And here comes the complement the bitwise operators. In the bitwise operators, if suppose I have given A is equal to zero, if A is zero, the complement of A will become one, right? The complement of A becomes one. If suppose A is equal to one, the complement of A will be zero. Now, suppose I have given A is equal to 10. If you convert this into binary form, A is a binary in binary, it is 1010. Zero, zero. That is 2 plus 8, 10. Now, I want to see the complement of A. The complement of A is indicated like this. And uh, the complement of A will be you perform this bitwise operation on each and every bit. 1 becomes 0, 0 becomes 1, 1 becomes 0, 0 becomes 1. So, this is the complement of A here, the value. So how much is it will be? Its value is equal to 5. So A is 10, but uh, complement of A will be 5 only. Okay, next. And operator. Suppose uh, A and B values are given here. 
and and operation when performed and operation between these two we get this result when both are zero zero when either of one is positive one even we get zero when both of them are one then only we get one here okay let us see how it is performed bitwise and i have taken a, a is equal to 10 that is 1010 10. b is equal to 12 so 1100 0, 0. now a and b becomes how much it will be let us see 1 1 right 1 and 1 1 and 1 becomes 1 here 0 and 1 becomes 0 0 and 1 becomes 0 1 0 becomes 0 1 0 0 0 0 of course right 0 0 is 0 so uh, when you perform your and operation on a and b each and every bit changes here and finally this value is 8 so when and operation is performed on a and b its value is 8 let us see similar operation on r r operator so here the r operator works like this this both uh, a and b zero it is zero either of them is one we get one here when both are also equal to one we get one so r operator let us see a same value taken b also same value 10 and 12 are taken a or b how much this becomes 1110 one, one, how 1 and 1 1 1 r r 1 here r operator so 1 r 1 1 r 1 1 1 0 1 0 1 becomes 1 here 1 0 also becomes 1 0 0 obviously 0 so this value uh, r is operated on a r b a r b gives rise to 14 here right and you sum up this you get 14 so like this r operator works next exclusive r coming to this exclusive r the truth table shows like this a and b values when both are zero it is zero when zero and one are one or zero we get one when both are one we get zero when both are zero or both are one we get zero here as our well. When either of one is zero and either of one is one, we get one as output. So let's perform this uh, operation on uh, A and B, exclusive R. This exclusive R operation takes place like this. One, one, that is one, one, zero. One, one, zero. Zero, one, zero, one, one. Zero, one is one. One, zero is one. 1, 0 is 1. 0, 0 is 0. 0, 0 is 0. So like this, when uh, exclusive R is performed on A and B, we get 6 here. This value of 2 plus 4, 6. So like this, binary and R exclusive R operates. Next, uh, let us see shift operators. These shift operators are two, left shift and right shift operators. Left shift in the sense the bits are moved to the left side. How many bits are indicated by one, two, three, like that? Let us see how it operates. When A is taken as 12, when it is converted to binary code, it gets 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. That is, I have taken eight bits here. Now, I want to perform left shift operation one, left shift one, right? One operation on that to left shift. I have to move these bits towards left. Let us see how. So, taken the value of A in the binary form, because I want to perform only one left shift operation, remove one bit here in the left side, like this, and move this uh, the remaining bits towards left they move to the left side by one bit now what happens we get a wide gap here in the right side 
fill it with zero. That's all. So you must have eight bits. So here, if you observe, the bits are moving towards the left means they are moving towards higher values. So it actually starts with the two power zero, two power one, right? Two square like this. So what is happening? These bits are moving towards the left side, their value increases. So what happens? Initial value of A is this one, right? It becomes 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 3, 0. Its value is 24. What happens? Its value 12 became 24. It doubled. Okay. Next. Left shift operation 2. Left shift, I want to move the bits by 2 bits. Right. Let us see how it happens. I have taken the A value. Because we want to perform left shift operation and that to 2, 2 bits should be removed here from the in the left side like this and move these remaining bits towards left towards left and you get a void here on the right side fill them with zeros you get uh, this value what how much it will be it became the initial value of 10 becomes this 0 0 1 1 double 0 double 0 so its value if you calculate it is 48 what happens compared to the earlier one it has doubled. That means when you are moving the bits towards the left side by one bit, its value doubles. Okay. So here, when it is moved by one, 12 become 24. When you move by one more bit, it, this value itself became double. So like this, left shift operation takes place. Let us see right shift operation. You can remember this by just seeing the this as an arrow head, right? If you have an arrow, it's the arrow head is showing towards right side. That's why we can call it as right shift. So here, let us see right shift one, one arm. So A right shift one, A value, initial value is 12 we have taken, right? The same value, in the binary form. Now, because we want to remove, to move towards the right side, remove one bit in the right side. One bit in the right side. And the remaining all the bits should be moved to the right. So they move to the right like this. Giving you a wide, a gap here in the left side. Fill it with zero. That's it. So you get the value of one right shift operation. So here, this uh, value becomes 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. That means it is 6. What happened? Initially, the value is 12, right? This 12 has become half of it. It is half. Because we are moving the bits towards the least value side, lower values, right side. If you move towards left, their value increases. Because you are moving towards the left, right, the their value decreases. Next, right shift two. Let us see how this right shift operates. You have taken the A value again. Because we want to remove, we want to move towards right, remove two bits on the right side. Okay? Two bits are removed, and all the remaining bits are moved towards right by two bits. Okay? Now, when it is moved towards right, you get a void, fill it with the zeros, you get. Now, if you find this 1 and 2, right? The value in decimal is 3. So, this initial value of A becomes last 1, 1. So, its value is 3. What happened? When you move by one more bit from this one, its value is half, half of this. So, you remember it? When you move the bits towards right side, its value halves. When you move towards the left side, its value doubles. Right? No. So that is all about the binary operators. Next comes a ternary operator. So ternary operator is, uh, uh, it requires three operands, right? And uh, the, it is indicated by a question mark and a column is a conditional operator. So here, we take the value of A here, suppose a condition, some condition. 
a is compared with zero, whether it is greater than or equal to zero. If this becomes true, this condition true, this statement executes. If it is false, this statement is executed. Right? Now let us see how with a small example, we have taken the value of a here and a is compared with zero. Right? A, we want to enter a value for a and we enter a value and compare it with zero. A is equal to zero, double equal to sign here. If it is zero, if this condition is true, this should be executed. That is, it should say A is zero. If it is not equal, that means this statement is false. That in that case, it should come here. This statement should be executed. How this is entering a number for A, right? We have entered a zero, right? This is true. This statement, this condition itself has become true. That's why this statement is executed. It is saying A is zero, right? Fine. Let us uh, execute again. Now we give a positive value, some 30, right? A is not zero because A is uh, equal to zero is true, but here it's false. So this statement is executed. A is not zero. That's how these uh, ternary operators operate. So with this, we have finished the unary, binary, and ternary operators. Let us see increment and decrement operators very clearly in the next video. Please do subscribe so that you get alert. Thank you.